Hello friends and welcome to Skyjet Wings, Canada's largest defense contract ever, a $27.7 billion F-35 deal is suddenly on the brink, and the threat isn't Russia, it isn't China, it's Sweden. A leaked Arctic performance assessment delivered a brutal number to Ottawa. In Canada's Arctic, the one place Canada must defend, the F-35 reportedly completes just 42% of required missions. 42%. That number rattled Canadian defense planners and raised serious concerns in Washington. The F-35 is a technological marvel, stealth, sensor fusion, cyber warfare dominance. But it was designed for a war Canada will never fight. Warm NATO runways, massive logistics chains, carrier-based operations. That's not the Arctic. Canada's north has no infrastructure, no heated hangars, and temperatures plunging to minus 50 degrees Celsius. Blizzards last weeks. Magnetic interference disrupts avionics. In those conditions, complexity becomes a liability. Each flight hour costs around $44,000. Prep times stretch into hours, and Arctic readiness drops below 50%. When Russian aircraft probe Arctic airspace, which happens regularly, Canada has 15 minutes to respond. In extreme cold, the F-35 may need up to two hours to be ready. By then, the mission is already over. Sweden built its fighter for this exact environment. Frozen roads as runways, tiny ground crews, scramble times measured in minutes, not hours. Different design, different battlefield, different outcome. This isn't about the F-35 being bad, it's about it being wrong for the Arctic. And if Canada walks away, it won't just shake this deal, it could rewrite how nations defend the top of the world. The real question isn't whether the F-35 is powerful. The question is simple. Can the F-35 defend the Arctic? According to a classified Canadian capability assessment, the answer is no. The Gripen E isn't flashy, it doesn't have absolute stealth, it wasn't built to dominate global airspace, it was built for one purpose only, to survive and fight in the harshest environment on Earth. Sweden understands something many Western planners ignored for decades. They spent over 70 years preparing for a war everyone else thought impossible, a winter conflict in the Arctic. The Gripen is the result of that fear. Its capabilities sound unreal, but they're very real. It can take off from an 800-meter stretch of frozen highway. No runway, no hangar, no heavy ground infrastructure. A team of five people can refuel and rearm a Gripen in under 10 minutes. For the F-35, roughly 30 personnel and over two hours. Operating cost, $7,800 per flight hour, compared to the F-35's $44,000. That's not just cheaper. That's the difference between flying every day and flying only when desperate. Here's the critical point defense analysts emphasize. In Arctic warfare, victory doesn't go to the most advanced technology. It goes to whoever can sustain operations the longest, from the most locations, with the least support. The Gripen was designed for exactly that. It operates in minus 40 degrees Celsius without special modifications. It disperses across highways and remote strips, turning the Arctic itself into an airbase. And this isn't theory. The Arctic Capability Assessment wasn't public. It asked one question only. Can the F-35 meet minimum requirements to defend Canada's Arctic territory? After six months of simulations, including airspace violations, bomber intercepts, and winter patrols, the results stunned both Ottawa and Washington. In harsh Arctic conditions, the F-35 completed only 42% of missions. The Gripen achieved over 70%. That number isn't just data. It's the difference between an Air Force that can actually defend sovereignty and one that looks powerful only on paper. According to experts involved in the assessment, the Gripen delivers three times the Arctic readiness at one-fifth the cost. And in the Arctic, readiness is everything. That means with the same budget, Canada could fly up to 15 times more patrol hours than it could with the F-35. The Pentagon's response? Radio silence. They can't deny the data, and they can't promise fixes, because these aren't software problems, they're design and logistics realities. 
But here's what truly worries Washington. If Canada, America's closest ally, its most trusted NORAD partner, publicly admits the F-35 doesn't meet its defense needs, what happens next? Poland just signed an F-35 deal. Finland is weighing its options. Norway has already placed orders. Every one of them operates in cold, harsh environments. If Canada breaks ranks, the dominoes start to fall. A global export program worth hundreds of billions of dollars suddenly looks fragile. And the jet, once dismissed as a minor regional aircraft, becomes something else entirely, the most serious threat to America's defense industrial dominance. To understand why this decision matters, look north. Right now, Russia operates over 50 active military bases across the Arctic. Canada has fewer than 10. While Ottawa debates budgets, Moscow has deployed advanced air defense systems along its northern coast, expanded Arctic bomber bases, and built the largest nuclear icebreaker fleet on Earth. This isn't theoretical. It's a sovereignty strategy. Russia now fields hundreds of Arctic-capable aircraft, including interceptors built specifically for extreme cold. They conduct regular patrols near Canada's airspace, probing response times and mapping defenses. Every time it happens, Canada has minutes to decide, scramble or don't. With long preparation times, the answer is often simple. We can't get there in time. And that's exactly why this choice matters. Because the Gripen isn't just a fighter jet. It's a mobile Arctic defense system built for speed, dispersal, and constant presence. In the Arctic, power isn't about what looks best on paper. It's about who can show up every single time. Dispersal changes everything. By operating from multiple locations, Canada can maintain continuous presence along its northern border without building massive, expensive infrastructure. Rapid deployment cuts response times from hours to minutes. Low operating costs mean more patrols, not fewer, creating constant deterrence instead of occasional visibility. And this is the core truth Arctic strategists agree on. In Arctic warfare, victory doesn't belong to whoever has the most powerful weapons. It belongs to whoever shows up the most. But the Gripen doesn't win on mobility alone. Its integrated sensor architecture was designed for exactly the kind of warfare Canada faces. Radar, infrared, and electronic warfare are fused into a single data network, critical in an environment where magnetic interference and extreme weather degrade traditional radar systems. The Gripen can track bombers and cruise missiles at long range, share real-time targeting data with ground-based air defenses, and even intercept hypersonic threats launched from northern Russia. That's important because the F-35 was designed to penetrate air defenses, not to serve as a dedicated Arctic interceptor. Low cost delivers another advantage most people overlook, training. With the same budget, Canadian pilots could log up to six times more flight outs. More training means more experienced pilots, faster reactions, higher readiness. That's real combat power. Geopolitically, the implications go even deeper. If Canada selects the Gripen, it becomes the first NATO country to walk away from the F-35 after signing an initial contract. That's not just procurement, that's a declaration of strategic independence. Ottawa would be sending a clear message. Alliances don't require technological dependence. NORAD can still function, even if Canada and the United States don't fly the same aircraft. And in the Arctic, effectiveness matters more than uniformity. National security can't be sacrificed to political pressure. Washington knows that, and its reaction proves it. U.S. defense officials have reportedly pressed Ottawa to reconsider, with some in Congress even hinting at trade retaliation if Canada walks away from the F-35. That pressure says everything, because the data doesn't lie. Ottawa now has proof that choosing the Gripen isn't betraying an ally, it's protecting sovereignty. Canada isn't choosing the flashiest jet, it's choosing the one that can actually defend the Arctic. And that's a distinction Washington doesn't like. The $27.7 billion F-35 deal isn't just weakening, it's becoming irrelevant to Canada's real defense needs. The Gripen offers lower costs, faster response, true dispersal, and Arctic resilience. The F-35 needs massive infrastructure, the Gripen needs a highway and a five-person crew.
The F-35 flies sparingly. The Gripen can patrol daily. Canada isn't winning the Arctic with hype. It's winning it with readiness. And the real question now isn't why Canada chose the Gripen, it's how many others will follow. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe Skyjet Wings.